So I got a little package today. Let's see what it is. Oh man. I'm sure you guys know what that is. All right, so this thing actually came a lot quicker than expected. So as you probably guessed it, yes, this is the new turbo for the bike. Um, so let's see. Um, let's open it. I don't, I don't even want to waste time. So actually, let me put this down for a second. Right, let's see if I can finally get this thing open now. My freaking phone just fell like 10 times. Damn, that actually, that was actually easier to do than the screwdriver. All right, uh-oh. That Garrett goodness been wanting to run one of these turbos for a long time on my bike I knew this day would finally come all right Oh my God, this thing is beautiful. So let me grab the phone, put this down. So this is a Garrett Turbo, obviously. But the nice thing about this turbo is it's actually dedicated to um, like, my application, I guess you could say like a single cylinder application or a power sports application. Um, with this turbo, I did go with the, let me see if you can pick it up, the GBC 22350. So this one is the largest one of the bunch. They have four different flavors to choose from. This one in particular has a um, 4456 compressor wheel. So this is a little bit bigger than the EcoBoost Turbo. Um, and then this also has a 5046 turbine wheel, which is also a good bit larger than this thing right here. So, and then I know a lot of people have been asking me what size this turbo was. So you really can't find a lot of uh, information on these online. I want to say this is a KO3 based turbo frame um and i actually have to measure it myself with a set of uh calipers so what i came up with was a 4153 so like i said this this one right here is a 4456 so this one is larger and then on the turbine side i don't want to show you guys this because this thing is like butchered but this is what you got to do when you're testing stuff and don't want to spend a lot of money. I mean, it worked good for what it was. But anyways, this is a uh, 4742 on the turbine side. And the Garrett is a 5046. So this turbo, I mean, other than the fact that this has the new aero technology uh, that G Garrett incorporates into their compressor wheels and turbine wheels um this turbo should flow quite a bit more than this one right here and granted this is a oem application turbo so i got this off of a 2020 ford edge uh inline four cylinder turbo so there you go for what it was it worked good but this is the way to go right here this Garrett has answered my prayers. So shout out to the guys at Garrett. Um, I really plan on pushing this turbo. Hopefully we can make some good power with it. The thing that I really like about this turbo is um, this has 
an internal wastegate. So I was using an external wastegate on the last setup, and that was just one more thing to package. And I didn't have a lot of room as it was already. So this will make it a lot easier this time around because I could just get a T25 flange, <clears throat> some Schedule 10 piping, and just run it straight to the exhaust port. Just a nice straight um, line of pipe with no, you know, TNN and an external wastegate or any of that other BS. So, man, this thing, I can't get over how good of quality this thing is. So smooth. Um, this does have the uh, 0 0.5 bar um, internal wastegate. So um, I probably will be upgrading this to the bar and a half, 1.5 bar internal wastegate unit so I can run more boost. But who's to say, man? I probably won't even need to run a lot of boost with this thing. So yeah, this thing is nice. And it is so impressive with how much horsepower that this thing is capable of in the actual phys physical footprint. So, man, I already got it dirty. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let me... I'll stack this one up there, too, just so you can see a size comparison. And granted, I did modify this one a bunch on the turbine side, but I was able to shrink it down to this footprint right here. And if you watched my last video, you saw how massive this thing was before I modified it. So, <clears throat> where this turbo buys me room in the turbine area, since this has an internal wastegate, obviously this is a larger turbine housing physically, but the compressor housing makes up for space by being a lot more of a smaller footprint than the EcoBoost turbo. So this is a much bulkier housing and like I said, this is from an OEM application. So, I mean, it's nothing against this turbo at all. But this is uh, pretty impressive. And I'm ready to throw it on the bike. <laughs> I'm ready to throw it on the bikes. So, I don't want to waste any more time. Uh, I'll get it mocked up on the bike. I drew up a few different turbo uh, placements. And... I'm going to mock it up with the one that I think will probably work pretty good with the new setup. So let me, uh, yeah, let's pan over to that. So give me a minute. Couldn't resist. So I've been playing around with turbo ideas or turbo mounting locations. And I'm kind of liking this one right here. So this is obviously more rearward than um, the original turbo location but I kind of want it to make a point to make it uh, as durable as possible I guess you could say because I mean this location wasn't bad it's just you know and to be fair I've dropped it a couple times when the turbo was mounted right here um, and you know I never had any problems but uh, yeah this is a uh, I think this will work out a lot better and just to be clear so you give you a shot of how much is sticking out so the front fairing is actually out further than this but i don't have a official mount mount made yet so um, i'm just using one of the rear fairing bolt holes just to hold the turbo up just to give you guys an idea of how um, i'm planning to mount the turbo uh this is actually going to go more inward so it'll be more centered in this back frame area. Um, it's my overall plan to have this under the right side rear fairing. So I think it's achievable. Um, the thing about this turbo is this is actually a really compact size and is really impressive with uh, how much power this thing can make when you look at the footprint of it. Uh, let me grab the other turbo and just give you a comparison. All right, so this is my EcoBoost Turbo right here. Um, like I said, I had to modify the absolute crap out of this thing in order to get it to work. Um, 
Let me see. So this is the Garrett Turbo. This is the EcoBoost Turbo. So I think they kind of make up the difference of each other pretty pretty good. So this one, obviously, I have a more compact turbine housing uh, with a V-band um, turbine outlet port. This has a bulk, bulkier um, compressor housing than the Garrett Turbo, but the Garrett Turbo has a bulkier turbine housing. So you can kind of see they, the Garrett actually packages a little bit better than this one, to be quite honest. Um, like I said, I think I can get this thing in there pretty comfortably. Um, you can see the turbine wheel it just with the turbo mounted in this location it just answers so many issues um or so many problems that i had with the other setup so this actually gives me a much more sh straightforward path to the exhaust port so you can see this is actually going to be clocked downward so this will be facing the back of the motor <clears throat> or angled slightly upward it's, you know, it's, it's subject to a little bit of change versus how I got it mounted right here. But uh, for the most part, this, it will be in this location. So super simple hot side. Don't have to mess around with the external wastegate anymore because this actually has an internal wastegate, as you can see right there. This has a 5046 turbine. And then on the compressor side, it is a... Uh, I think it's a 4146 or 4650 okay correction on the compressor wheel size this is actually a 4456 so this is slightly larger than the ego boost turbo this i couldn't find any specs online and i mean it, it's a proprietary turbo to borg warner so unless you measure it you know yourself you really won't find any specs on these turbos online unless it's like an upgrade that an aftermarket uh company is selling this measured out at like i want to say a 4153 on the compressor and then a 4740 on the exhaust or 4742 on the exhaust so all around this turbo is a little bit larger um should be able to stretch it out a little bit more than this well a lot more than this one actually because this actually has a longer hot side and um i gotta make a separate video on this but depending on how long the hot side is can have a big bearing on how far you can take one of these turbos because of the exhaust pulses that a single cylinder creates now this is a whole whole nother subject like I said, I'll make another video on it because there's a lot of science that goes into turboing a single cylinder. Um, you basically just throw out everything that you know turbocharger wise on a multi cylinder en engine because it's a lot different with the single cylinder stuff. So, um, for the code side, um, I'll probably also run this in this area right here. Um, I got a lot of room right here, and then it also helps that this uh like aluminum extrusion on the frame um this actually is already notched for the stock exhaust so that makes it pretty easy to run both hot and cold side through this area and if i have to i will just you know wrap both of them in some uh like dei heat tape just so you know one doesn't heat soak the other um let's see and then obviously as i touched on in my previous video i'll have a a new plenum design um i'll try to make use of all this area right here these two ports i do want to move these maybe outside the radiator like on this outer tank and then just maybe loop around this center spine on the frame and just have an external water crossover because i want to try to use as much of this real estate as possible for the plenum 
I want to try to get as large of a plenum as possible in this area. So, and then I, I kind of want to do a crazy down pipe. Um, maybe a teardrop. I don't know. I might let you guys decide that one, but all in all, this placement just... I don't know, this placement just makes a lot more sense. Especially with this tucked in a little bit further. It just like, already got clearance for my internal wastegate right there. I'll probably upgrade this to a 1.5 bar unit. This is a half a bar um, internal wastegate. Man, this camera is giving me all types of problems but yeah this this should look sick and then on the street i'm thinking of maybe just picking up another right side fairing and i'll probably have it trimmed so the turbine wheel is i mean so the compressor wheel is visible and you know i can get fresh air through it and then when i go off road i'll have another um like a stock style right side fairing so this is covered obviously with the filter and then outerwear but um yep i got all my piping ordered um i will be running schedule 10 um piping on this build so that's a little bit more rigid a lot more wall thickness uh, versus the turbo kit versus the previous turbo kit hot side <clears throat> and then i'll have um probably two structural mounts so i'll i was originally going to cut this off and run a v-band but i, I kind of want to try to keep this as one piece just so i don't have any chance of uh you know of any welds cracking or anything because there is a process with welding cast iron you just can't you know take some filler rod and a TIG welder straight to it. Like this, this has to be preheated uh, to get good penetration or it you'll have a brittle weld. So I think I wanna just leave this B and just keep the T25 flange on here. They actually even make some T25 flanges with um, some outer bolt holes that actually serve as a mounting <coughs> plate. So um, I'll probably go that direction. Um, let's see what else. But before I make any mounts, I am going to throw on my um, dirt tire because obviously these warp nines are 17s. My dirt tire is a 19. So I just want to make sure there won't be any like clearance issues between the tire and the turbo. I highly doubt it though, but I just want rather be safe than sorry. But yeah, this is, uh, and then on top of that, actually, this is something else I forgot to mention. Since I'm not running a muffler anymore, this is actually placing the weight right back where I took the weight out. So this turbo, believe it or not, is actually lighter than the stock muffler that comes on here. But you know, it's always better if you could just, you know, try to retain like a stock weight bias versus like how on the previous kit, I had this turbo mounted right here. I mean, I never felt anything weird riding the bike, but you know, it's just, it's better weight balancing. If you could just, you know, keep it in a stock configuration weight wise and weight placement wise. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get started on this. And then I'm thinking for maybe the charge pipe, this will probably snake through here a little snake behind here for sure and then i'm kind of limited on what i could do right here because obviously the stock gas tank sits right in this area or like right in this area right here so i can't fit it like a two inch or a inch and three quarter pipe through there so what i'm thinking is maybe i could wrap around here go up through here this will be getting changed right here. I'm gonna um, actually 
trying to cut that fitting off of the radiator and do an AN line setup so I can drop this line down and do, instead of a 45, it'll be like a 90 degree line. It'll buy me a lot of clearance in this area right here. So um, I'll probably have the charge pipe run past here, go up through here. And yeah, I should be able to squeeze something through here for sure. And then the plenum will be in this area. And I kind of want to try to keep the roof height low on this plenum because I want to run my stock airbox cover. <clears throat> I just want to try to make it look as stock as possible. So, um, yeah, this would be nice. There's really no type of compromise with this setup, to be honest. I mean, if I really, you know, if I weren't so picky and wanted to use the bike, you know, on dirt or just off-road in general, if I just wanted to keep it as a supermoto, you know, I could have easily threw a setup together to try to uh, just cater it towards supermoto more than off-road, but it's just, it's kind of a, I want my cake and I want to eat it too situation, so <clears throat> I don't want to limit it to just one style of riding, so... But I think this this should work out pretty good. I just can't get over how pretty this turbo is. And then um, you guys can obviously see I don't have any wires on the bike or anything. So um, I'll just throw it out there. I am running a Fuel Tech 450 now. Um, it, it's actually getting shipped out later this week. Um, so I'll be taking advantage of a lot of features that the fuel tech is going to bring to the table for the bike um as far as you know data acquisition so um it'll give me the capability to run a flex fuel sensor <clears throat> so if for the guys that don't know what that is that's basically a sensor that shows you the percentage of ethanol that's in the fuel and it'll compensate for how aggressive the tune is based off how good the fuel is so it's, <clears throat> it adds a level of uh, safety for sure. And then it, it also gives me the ability to run dual fuel if I want to. So I could literally go fill up with a half tank of E85 and a half tank of 93, and I'd still be able to ride this thing. And I wouldn't have to drain the fuel and cater to one f type of fuel at, you know, at any given time. I could literally run a mixture of both and the tune will automatically compensate for it based off what that flex fuel sensor sees. And, uh, you know, just for reference, this is actually a flex fuel sender that I ran on a pe previous truck build that I had. It was a turbo LS car. Um, this is actually a good sensor. I probably won't run this one because this one is kind of large in size and they make them a lot probably like a quarter of the size that this one is so i'll probably just leave this one on the shelf and use it on another car build <clears throat> and i'll end up you know probably just ordering the one from fuel tech <laughs> so this is what the flex fuel sender looks like it's basically just tied into the fuel line and uh fuel passes through a sensor in there that sensor can read the ethanol content percentage and uh yeah it'll display it on the dash so this is what it looks like for those guys wondering gyroscope so what that is is a sensor that can detect pitch roller yaw when you do a wheelie you're changing the yaw angle so that's like the vertical axis um the nice thing about the fuel tech ecu is that you can reference a lot of those sensors to trigger outputs on the ecu um let's say if i had a oil a 12 volt oil scavenge pump hooked up to this setup as it is right now i could program a table in the ecu that says oh when you see so many you know degrees of yaw um trigger on this output and that output is so happened to be connected to my oil scavenge pump which will trigger it on at that given yaw angle so that'll be pretty nice 
because I, I won't have a pump running 100% of the time. That's, that's one thing I wanted to try to avoid. Um, I don't want it to be dependent on the pump 100% of the time because if the pump goes out, you're screwed. So, <laughs> but it's, it's clever little features like that <clears throat> that's going to make a setup like this possible. So, <clears throat> I still haven't picked out a pump yet. I do have a, a few good options available that, you know, won't break the bank. You know, maybe 60 to 120 bucks for a nice pump because, you know, I don't want some cheap crap. But that's the one area where, you know, I'll actually buy a quality product. So um, I'm thinking of maybe mount, mounting that like maybe somewhere up here in the frame. Most of them that I've researched so far are pretty small in size, maybe like 60 millimeters in length. So that's pretty small. Um, but yeah, that'll, that'll be pretty cool. Um, fuel tech, I should have that this week. I'll probably also do an unboxing video of that. And then I have another, um, electronic coming this week for wiring the lights, handlebars, and basically everything that is non-engine related. And, uh, some of you guys probably know what I'm talking about, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, that'll probably be here. Actually, I don't know when that'll be here because it's on back order right now. So hopefully it'll be here soon because that's one thing I want to have knocked out before I have the motor built. So that way I'm not, you know, scrounging around during summertime trying to get this thing together. And, you know, that's never fun. But, uh, yeah. So hopefully I get the piping in this week, though. I can start on this kit. It will should be pretty simple. It's... Like I said, it's a pretty straightforward shot to the turbo, which will help with spool, definitely. So, but yeah, um, I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, TikTok, Facebook, here, because uh, this build, I mean, it's, you know, it's snowballing pretty quick, and I want to... I want to make a statement with this build. So, <laughs> yes, um, stay tuned and I should have another update soon. Peace.